All right. So I'm excited to have uh, the Kaufmans, Doctors Kaufmans, on here with us. They have been a client for almost four years now. Uh, I don't know if y'all realize it had been that long. I know it, it had been a minute, uh, but consistently they are just doing such a great job uh, in getting the leads or the, they call them signups, getting those people to come in the office. And so I wanted to do this um, video to talk about their process and what they're doing and how they're doing it uh, to help all of you guys watching out there. But first off, can you tell us a little bit about your experience working with Cairo Candy? Would you like me to start off? Um, yeah, you can start off if you like. Uh, well, Cairo Candy, we've been with them for a while, but last year we had the opportunity to really see what a difference it made. Um, during COVID, I have been the practice rep here for almost eight years. Um, during COVID, events were canceled and we desperately needed a way to connect with people in our community that needed us during that time. Um, so my experience is, you know, during COVID, I had one of my best months as a practice representative because of Cairo Candy. Um, you know, we, I started reaching out to people who had signed up several months before, calling them again, and the response was excellent. So we have really built on that and seen a lot of success. Very good. So whenever um, we have, this is something that we see a lot. I don't want to say a lot, but from time to time, we'll have doctors say, hey, I'm getting leads, but they're really poor quality. Uh, Dr. Danielle, if you don't mind, I would like you to kind of touch on your response to this. I was fortunate enough to have dinner with you guys here last month, uh, and you kind of got on a soapbox about this a little bit, and I wish we would have recorded it then, but uh, <laughs> if, when somebody says, you know, hey, they're getting poor quality leads or signups coming in, what would your response be to that? Well, there is no such thing as a poor quality sign up. I mean, these are human beings, people, they, they sign up, they click, they, they might wake up at two in the morning and be in pain and they find us and click, uh, they need us. So who are we to say this is a poor uh, lead or sign up? So there is no such thing. These are people that have problems and they need us and they're all great quality. Uh, patients, everybody is. Any prospective patient is a quality patient, whether they come from a, a screening in person or a sign up on Facebook. Um, and if they end up not coming in, I was telling you at dinner, it doesn't mean no, I don't want to come in. It means maybe not yet. Uh, but they needed us at that time. And it's our responsibility to reach back out to them uh, that, that day, that week, that month, uh, three months later and try to get them to come to see us. And Amber has been very successful with that. Yeah, I think that's great. Because one of the things that we always say is they did not accidentally click on the no. ad. Well, okay, let's say they did. <laughs> they didn't accidentally type in their name that's and right. their phone number and their email address. And some of our offices do surveys. They didn't fill that out accidentally. So on some level, there was interest there. And I love what you're saying is even if it's not right now within the next you know couple of weeks or a couple of months there's a great chance if you continue to follow up like you guys do that you can get these people to come in um so on average I, I pulled up your numbers earlier and in the past seven days uh you guys have had 34 signups come in um can i ask like on average what do you out of those what are you expecting to show up Amber, on average. Yeah. Do you kind of know your numbers? Yeah. So on average, uh, the people that sign up, we get between anywhere between 60 and 70% of them to book and schedule their appointments. And then the majority of those folks arrive for their appointments. So we've that's had great. a lot of success. Yeah, that's, that's really, really good. Uh, so let's talk about your process. So whenever you guys are using you know, the app, the dashboard, the Cairo Candy app, um, when you get notified that someone just signed up, take us through your process. Sure. So there's a couple of things that are really important to us. As soon as we get that lead, well, sorry, not lead, <laughs> sign up. That's what we they call are. them leads. So that's, well, 
we're we're supposed to call them sign us because you know what these people are signing up they're exactly yeah that's good they're they're needing us so once we get that sign up as soon as we get it um we are calling that patient first we are texting them and we are sending them an email within minutes two or three minutes because we know that they're already thinking about this they just filled their information out so getting them right away is really important so being um, having a sense of urgency as soon as you get their information um, and then also being incredibly organized once you do get their information um, you know we just have a simple spreadsheet that we use every month to put their information in because if you don't there's really no way to care for it these individuals properly. Um, you know, they get called right away, they get a text right away, they get an email right away. Um, and if we're not reaching them in that first attempt, they're getting recontacted a few days later, and then they're getting contacted again a few weeks down the road. Um, and then I have a system for myself as well where I'm reaching out to months, a few months, and then a few older months. And so these folks are getting contacted a lot. I was actually shocked um, when we did start really um, reaching back out to, you know, we've been with you guys for four years now, you know, signups from three and four years ago, when I was doing this full time during COVID, people that were picking up the phone, scheduling their appointments, coming into the office three and four years later. So mm-hmm. it is oh, that's great. pretty incredible. But I would have to say, you know, being really organized is vital. You can't just, um, oh, this person signed up, I called them. Hope they show up. It, you know, you got to be really diligent about it. Um, and we talked about this in a meeting we had earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, the reason like we, that we ca- like to call them signups instead of leads is um, it's not just logging a name, a number, and an email. This is an individual with a need um, and just really keeping that passion for people's wellness at the forefront every time you're making that phone call, that there's somebody that's going to answer that really needs this. Right. Keeping that's that great. passion. I really love y'all's mindset when it comes to this, you know, calling them signups and you know, each person is someone living and breathing who has needs. I think that's, that's great. Uh, there's been a couple of things you said. One, you guys follow up immediately. And yeah. that is so crucial uh, because the longer you wait, here's a great example. Let's say it's the weekend and there's yard work I need to get done. I've been putting it off. You know what? I'm finally motivated, go change, get on my, you know, my old tennis shoes to go work in the yard. And then the phone rings. I get distracted. It's my brother, cousin, friend, whatever. And so I'm on the phone with them for 10 to 15 minutes. I hang up. All that motivation's gone. You know what? I'll, I'll do the yard the next day. And that was just, just a little bit of time that totally, my motivation totally shifted. So whenever they first sign up, they're motivated. They stopped what they were doing. They were on the internet. If you're ever going to be distracted, it's going to be on the internet. They stopped what they were doing. Right. They saw, you know, your post, your ad, they filled out the information. They were motivated. That's the absolute best time to get them. Um, So Amber, let me ask you this. I'm a sign up. You call me. Can you go through your script? Uh, I would just say, hey, this is Amber. I'm with Kaufman Chiropractic. I'm just reaching out to help you schedule your appointment time for your special appointment with the chiropractor. Um, We have our office here in Maryville. We have availability today at four o'clock and we have an appointment tomorrow at 10. What works best for you? That's great. Yeah, and and just keeping it really simple, keeping them, um, you know, if you call someone and you say, Hey, uh, we're helping you schedule your appointment. What time you want to come in? I mean, this could be a half hour discussion. Um, <laughs> so just staying on task, you know, when you're making those calls right away, have the available schedule already pulled up in front of you, give them two options. Um, if they can't do either one, give them two more kind of narrow down what their availability is. Um, just keep it very simple and keep them guided. Um, as soon as they pick a time. All right. We are, I, I, I avoid using the word like reserving this appointment because, you know, you think about a restaurant reservation, it can be canceled easily, right? So I always say we are booking and scheduling this appointment for you with the doctor. You'll get a reminder the day before. We can't wait to meet you. Just kind of guiding with a little bit of authority um, 
and letting them know this is very important. We're very excited to meet you. And then making sure that you're doing that reminder the day before, making sure that they're getting that reminder text or call um, with the address to the office so it's easy for them to show up the next day. That's good. What are some of the objections that you may get whenever you call somebody? <laughs> um, you know, you get a lot of, oh, I don't know what my work schedule is going to be like. Okay, well, again, that, that goes back to just having authority. Um, okay, what time do you get off work? Four o'clock. Oh, that's great. We have plenty of appointments after four o'clock. We have this and this available. Um, you know, sometimes when I'm scheduling people, I think of, okay, sometimes you have to treat them like they're your kids, <laughs> you know, just this, you want this, you need this, this is how we're going to get there, um, and being authoritative with them. Um, schedule is usually the biggest objective that you get. Objection. Objection, yeah. yeah, that you get from people, and it just learning the best way to continue leading them to setting up that appointment. Every once in a while, um, like you mentioned earlier, you may get someone who say, I just, I don't know if I'm ready to see a chiropractor. Yeah, I do have this pain, uh, reassuring them. Well, this is definitely the right thing for you to do. You need to come in and talk to the chiropractor about this issue that you're having. They will listen to your concerns. They will listen to any fears that you have or um, anything that may be keeping you from feeling comfortable. The doctor's the absolute best in best person to talk to about that. So why don't we go ahead and schedule tomorrow at 10 for you to come in and see Dr. Kaufman. So just guiding them and leading them. Yeah. And just assuming. Not, yeah, absolutely. Time, can we still go ahead and get you scheduled? I mean, you're always going back to, let's go ahead and put you down for 10. Fair enough. Like, is that good? Yeah, that's very good. I also liked what you said about being authoritative. And some of that may be because you've been doing this for eight years, you know, been a practice rep, because I know some CAs that are following up, sometimes they're intimidated, especially if they get somebody that's a little rougher, you know, maybe a little stern on the phone. It's very easy for them to just kind of, uh, okay, you know, and hang up. Something else that we see is some staff will say, you know, hey, I've called all 10 of these, these didn't answer, you know, they had three come in, seven didn't answer, changed their mind or whatever. And then so they think, yeah, just Facebook leads don't work. And in their mindset, every time they see somebody come in is, yeah, these just aren't, you know, they're not high quality, you know, if you will. Yeah. So I, I really like that. Um, do you ever have somebody say, yeah, I don't remember signing up? You I have heard had a couple of people say that. Um, so then I just kind of backtrack like, oh, we have this special promotion on our Facebook. You probably were watching our video um, about chiropractic care, right? So then I kind of get them to say, oh yeah, 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 I did see that video. Oh, great. Well, we specialize in taking great care of people. Um, you, maybe you have some neck and back pain. I kind of dig because there's a reason why they filled their information out, you know? Right. Um, and sometimes when that happens, they'll say, oh, you know what? That was for my husband. Fantastic. We definitely want to meet him. Um, you probably know his schedule really well too. I try to get the spouse or whoever they signed up for to go ahead and book an appointment. Um, and if not, I say, oh, I totally understand. Um, why don't you go ahead and give me your, your husband's contact number since you put yours in that sign up and I'll make sure that we get him signed up. So it's just, if you just say, oh, okay, and hang up, you're not going to reach that person. Right. So, you know, digging a little bit more when they say, I don't remember signing up. Oh, you probably saw our special video on our Facebook about our, our special voucher that we have. Almost 100% of the time, they're going to say, oh, yeah, I did see that. I thought my husband might need it, or I thought my daughter might need it. And just don't give up. Say, great, we definitely want to give your daughter that voucher. Um, what time should we schedule her appointment for tomorrow, this time or this time? And just continuing to um, talk to the person until you get the result that you need. That's really good. Uh, I, I love your, uh, it sounds like you have some sales training. You know, <laughs> I don't know if you've, so I have a background in phone sales 
we didn't do cold calling, but we used to sell, I used to sell rare coins, gold, silver, platinum. Dr. Bob and I, we talked about this, oh, yeah. uh, but it was all, it was all over the phone. I had a handful of clients that I'd met over the years, um, but how you're saying you're handling yourself on the phone is the exact same things that we, we would teach, you know, no matter what they say, oh, you know what, great. And then lead them right to the next, you know, right to the next step. So uh, that's really good. Um, what are some tips that you would give chiropractic assistants out there that are following up that aren't just having the best success? What are some things that you might be able to share with them? The most important thing, um, number one, is definitely keeping the right mindset. Um, it could be easy, especially if you have other responsibilities in the office, um, to let yourself get overwhelmed in a moment and, and see these signups as, oh my goodness, I got to make that call right now and feeling frustrated. You have to keep the mindset that this person, this person urgently needs our help. Um, the moment to reach them is now and keeping the right mindset of this person needs us. You're helping this person. Positive. I'm here to connect this person to our doctor um, and not, not looking at, as, at these calls or these emails and texts as just a, a task that I fulfill throughout the day. It is yeah, something good. vitally important because um, the, the right mindset will definitely help you. If, if you call someone with the wrong mindset, they can hear that, they can feel that. Yeah. Um, so keeping the right mindset is vital. Um, just some like logistics things, um, the spreadsheet that I have, I use Google Docs because I can access that on my phone 24 seven if I need it. Um, it's free <laughs> um, and it really helps me stay organized so that you know when I have half an hour, an hour in between these things that I'm doing, okay, I need, I'm gonna take this time, I'm gonna reach out to the folks that signed up three days ago that didn't answer. Um, organization, you have to be super organized and have a, a very good plan um, and then a couple of other tips is um, when I do the initial call, text and email, that's immediate. Um, but the folks that don't answer right away, the ones that get called a few days later or a few weeks later, a good time to do that is between six and eight in the evening because they're off work and they're a little easier to get them to comply. So if you reach someone at work, a lot of times they try to push you off. I'm at work right now, I can't do it. So um, calling them off work hours helps a lot. And having done this for a while, I don't know the science behind it. Fridays are a great day to get people on the phone and get them to schedule their appointment. I started noticing a pattern recently that I was having three to four times the amount of people pick up, answer, schedule their appointment on a Friday. Um, we speculated a little bit. We might think it be, it's because people are finishing their week. They're relaxing for the weekend. So they're more apt to schedule something for the following week. Um, but those are, those are the three main tips that, that I, you know, think would really help someone keeping the right mindset, staying incredibly organized and, um, you know, some evening hours and on Fridays are great times to reach people. Uh, Amber, so, tell Billy about between 9 p.m. and 9 a.m., though, those sign-ups, what do we do with that? Oh, yeah, we don't call them at 12. <laughs> we don't call them at right. 2 in the morning. If they sign up at 2 in the morning, um, you know, they're going to get a call at 9 in the morning. You know, I just, that's that's what we do. It's 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 board. professional. It's right. appropriate. Um, for, you know, they're, not, they're only going to get a call from us between 9 and 9, 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. That's good. What about over the weekends? Um, somebody comes in on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. Same thing on Saturday. Same thing on Sunday. Yeah. Just wait till Monday. Um, actually, Sunday and Saturday, I I do reach out to folks when they sign up. Um, oh yeah. They're they're off. Most of them are off work on their phone. You know that's when they signed up. So I I do reach out to them on Saturdays and Sundays as well. Do you happen to have like the schedule in front of you, or how do you do that? How do you know what's available, or do you um, know what new patient hours typically are? Uh, both of our offices are really good at sending me updated new patient appointment availability every evening. So I have access to that on my laptop, on my phone all the time. That's good. That's yeah, good. Amber doesn't work out of the office. She yeah. works out of the home or on the road or uh, she comes to the office off and on at both offices Can throughout the week, but not on a consistent basis. 
one thing that these guys I think take for granted is the accountability factor because Amber and Dr. Danielle have a weekly meeting where they go through all these statistics. And in the past we had had someone say, well, I didn't get any signups all weekend. Well, we have the data right in front of us that shows ex exactly how many signups they had. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Danielle is aware of it on a daily basis. When a signup occurs, it pings on both of their phones sim simultaneously. So Dr. Danielle knows and Amber knows and they're watching each other. And Amber and I strategize all the time to mm -hmm. improve our ratios. The arrival rate, if it's 70%, how do we get to 80% plus, you know? Her and I strategize every week. Um, Dr. Robert helps uh, Amber do a new video. Once a week, they, knew, they do a, a new little video. It takes, what, 30 minutes? It's not that difficult. Well, the thing is, it's a standing scheduled meeting for numbers and for the video production. And it happens every week, no matter what. Consistently. Consistently. And that accountability, there's the three of us are all watching the process. So there's no wiggle room there. All of us keep each other honest um, in terms of the production, the follow-up, the statistics. The strategies. And you can't just dump this in a CA's lap and say, here, do it, you know? And the internal staff, they're too busy with what's going on in the office internally. So I think you have to dedicate a person, um, you know, to do that. Um, I, I don't think you can utilize a front desk person to do that. The quality of the work is not going to be the same. I think you have no. to have a dedicated person to do this. I, I agree with that. Yeah. But they have to be very well trained. And Amber had been out in the field for years. So I remember when we first talked about this, I said, Amber, you don't have to do the myovision anymore. They already said, yes, mm -hmm. I want to come in. And at this point, it's just scheduling the appointment. Right. And then our doctors started saying, oh, you know, we don't like um, the, uh, we don't think the fair signups are as good as the Facebook signups. They're all good signups. And I corrected them <laughs> very politely. And I said, all signups are good, but I think they noticed that the quality of the people that signed up through Facebook ads was, was surprisingly very, very high. And, and uh, this also does not, um, Amber, at that point, as far as our in the community events, as a practice representative, we used to do events seven days a week, any event, small events, big events, medium events, now we're being very selective. Correct. We only pick quality events like a health fair or something we know will do very well versus trying to do all these different events seven days a week. This is giving us or giving Amber the opportunity to be more selective um, in, in picking out certain events. And then she dedicate the rest of all her time to the Facebook uh, signups. Right. Yep. So roughly out of the 34 over the past week you guys are expecting 24 25 if not more to come in that's great that's a lot of new patients a week it is, it right is. There. so um so what do you do when you're following up with these people a month or two later or even a year or two later what's your script on that i was um i was a little nervous when I first started calling the ones that were three and four years old, because I'm like, I don't know if they're going to remember signing up. Um, I was surprised at the number of people that still remembered. Oh my really? God. Yeah. I signed up for that. And it's funny because time is people think, Oh, I think I signed up for that last year. And it was like four years ago. <laughs> um, I'm like, Oh yeah, we just, we wanted to touch base with you because you hadn't had a chance to come in and use your voucher and we just wanted to reach back out and make sure you had the opportunity to do that. So I have this time and this time available. Simple as that. Oh, I don't think I'm interested right now, though. Thank you. What well, you really important that you take the opportunity to have the doctor take a look at what's going on. What are the things that were causing you pain? Was it back pain? What was it that caused you to get the voucher in the first place? You know, it was from time to time, my low back bothers me, but you know, it's, I don't know, it's been fine here lately. I haven't had any issues. So, 
it sounds like you're experiencing flare-ups and that does usually indicate an issue that should be looked at. And you know, we've learned that our health is priceless, especially over this last year, we have to take really good care of ourselves. So I would really encourage you take advantage of the voucher. The doctor's gonna give you excellent information. You can ask questions too, to see how we can help you best. And I really think you should take this 30, 45 minutes out of your day, come in and talk to the doctor and have them see what they can do to help you feel better. So good. Very, very good. So any last minute things or any other uh, tips or comments to help some of these other doctors? Because really, you know, I, I love how successful you guys have been with this. And we have a lot of other offices like you guys too, but we, we've worked with thousands of chiropractors and it does hurt me when someone cancels and we see they're getting results, but they're saying they're not getting them in. Um, and so that's that's why we wanted to start doing, you know, interviews like this is just to help help that. But um, what are any other? I'll say something. I will. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so really what people have to remember is that if they're not, I'm gonna be blunt a little bit. That's just the way that I am. Yes. Um, if they say that they're not having good success, it's their own fault because you guys are a great company and you are getting us the signups. It's up to us to make sure that they arrive. So offices that say that they don't have good results, it is their fault. So they need to change their system, have a better follow-up, maybe have a person solely dedicated to that. But you guys get us the, the signups and that's what we have you for. It's up to us to get them through the door. That's really my best recommendation is do it better. And, and, and to the note to the doctors, it's not about you. Um, when you, you gave me that book in the beginning, I think it was called Story Branding. It's about the patient. So you are the facilitator that helps the patient through this journey of healing. And then they end up winning at the end scene of the movie where they're healthy. So we are facilitators. So I see a lot of videos where it's the doctor, the doctor, the doctor talking about his technique and how great he is. Um, people don't watch that. We, we made Amber into the spokesman for, the, for chiropractic and essentially. And um, we took the doctors out of the mix. Um, they, they see the doctor when they come in, but we made Amber is the spokesperson during COVID just because she had a lot of time on her hands. We had no events. So the little videos is Amber doing yeah. them. Yeah. Do you ever get anybody that says, "Hey, are you were you the one on the video?" Yeah, all the time. <laughs> so it's, you know, the person that's calling them is the person that just spoke to them in the video. That I don't know if that helps, but I think it does. Yeah, I think it's yeah. a good tip. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, you, that's. Go ahead. Andrew. I I will say, and just to piggyback off that is. Um, I don't know if the doctors have a tendency to do this, but I even had a tendency to do this when I was out in the field is to get too technical and too complicated at the beginning. Um, we really try to keep our videos very simple, mm -hmm. very simple um, to where everybody can really understand. You know, the, if you make it super complicated, they may feel like, oh, I just watched this video on chiropractic. I got a free consult right here, I'm good. Um, you, want, you want to just address the issue so that they, take the initiative to sign up for the voucher um, and not overcomplicate the videos. Um, and then another thing I wanted to say is, you know, your new patients, I kind of look at them like my little babies. Um, they, they have to be treated a, with a little more patience and a little more gently. Um, you know, your patients that have already fallen in love with the office and the care, they're going to show up for their visits. They're going to be probably be on time for their visits. Um, new patients have not had the opportunity, especially, um, you know, folks that are signing up on Facebook, they've seen a video, they haven't had a face-to-face -face interaction with us yet in person. So we have to win them over. We have to be really patient. So if you get someone who answers, who's a little gruff or isn't quite ready, they might be scared. Right. They may have never gone to a right. chiropractor before. Right. Um, just like I would out in the field, it's reassuring people, making them feel safe, making them feel comfortable, making them feel like they're being heard. Um, 
that I think that's something that chiropractors do really well is to is to listen to their patients um, and, and get them the results that they need. So when you're when you're dealing with folks when they first sign up and you call them, you have to realize you, you have to make an excellent impression on them. They have to feel that we are really excited to have them come into mm-hmm. the office. Um, it, it's really important. They, they need a little bit extra care than your regular maintenance visits or right. folks that have been with you, with you for 15 years. Um, they're probably a little apprehensive. You know, they may have heard, you know, something from a cousin who went to a chiropractor one time and we're having to overcome that. So it, a lot of patience, a lot of passion, um, and really just investing a lot of good energy into these calls. You know, they really need us and they want us. Right. So we've talked before and some different training I've done and even one-on-one with doctors and staff um, about the value of the patient, right? Because you're not only, is it, you know, whatever the cost of their care is, but they could be referring their family and friends over the lifetime. You have to look, each one of these is, you know, possibly $10,000 or more, but I love how you guys are looking at it. It's not about that. It's, you guys are coming at this from a total place of serving and of love. Like they need us. We're here to help. They need what we have. How can we win them over to let them know we can help them. Absolutely. Yeah. It, Very good. About changing lives. My, my dad just went to a chiropractor randomly and it changed his life. So, you know, and that's how I changed my life because I became a chiropractor because of that. So when a patient comes to a chiropractor, you might, he might never need a back surgery because of that. He might have a whole different second half of his life that is pain-free, which is going to affect his wife, his children, his grandchildren, and everybody around him. So you, we get to be the hero in the middle of the movie that helps this poor soul find their way to the, the, the winning scene, right? But, but that's what we do. So I, it's not about me. It's, it's about the patient and getting them to, to win, you know, and the, the win is being healthy. So that's, right. if we, we keep that mindset foremost, uh, then we don't get lost ourselves and we keep focused on our, our, our core mission. I mean, it, it requires good management because you're dealing with a lot of numbers and yeah. names and emails and phone numbers. And like Amber said earlier, you have to be very organized. And uh, so that intricate part, you know, the system part of it is very important, but the ultimate result is to get that patient better and that keep that patient for their lifetime. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for this. Uh, Here's a question, kind of a little bit. um, It's not one that we had previously discussed. How many, do you have any idea the impact financially that Cairo Candies had on your practice? Like, have you ever looked at those numbers? Well, we do. We analyze our return and um, we analyze how much we put into our budget and what the return is. And I mean, we've been with you for four years now, so that speaks for itself. That's sure. All I'm say. <laughs> sure. Sure. Well, no, that's, that's good. Thank you guys so much for this. Uh, really appreciate it and hope it helps a lot of other offices get the success okay. that you guys have. And, and Billy, we're, we're always available to answer questions. Don't yeah. hesitate to give them my, uh, my email address and Amber's email address. And someone told me to read this book by Billy and Brady Sticker. So it's on the top of my uh, stack, Billy. Well, good. Good. Appreciate it. Tribe of new patients. All right. Uh, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. So. Thank you.